you probably have no clue how to use autofocus on a Lumix camera because you've never had to use it. Am I right? Well, in this video, whether you've messed with the autofocus settings on past Panasonic cameras or you have no clue what you're doing. We're going to be talking about all the different settings, modes, and things you will definitely want to change on your S5 Mark II right out of the box. Oh, and that video you just watched was shot on the S5 II in autofocus, if you were wondering, and later in the video, I will get my opinion of my buddy Dallas, a Sony shooter, and what he thinks the autofocus compares to Sony. Let's go. Really quick, I'm giving away two different lenses. Once we reach 10K on YouTube, I'm giving away a Mike 50mm 1.2 for L mount. And once I reach 10K on Instagram, I'm giving away an L mount 85mm 1.8. All you gotta do is subscribe or follow to participate in those giveaways. Why not just follow and subscribe? You could win both, who knows? All right, so now you just got your camera, took it out of the box, set up your time zone and all that stuff, and now the camera is on. The first thing you'll wanna do is go into the menu and change the exposure mode to M for manual. The next thing is change the rec file format from MP4 to MOV click yes. The next thing you'll want to turn on is constant preview. I literally have no clue why this is not the default option. If you leave this off and adjust your settings on your camera, you won't be able to see in real time what your exposure is. Anyways, the last thing you'll want to change is change the continuous AF mode from mode one to mode two. Yet again, this is another one of those things that I think should just be turned on by default. If you leave this on mode one, the autofocus will only start working when you press record. Makes no sense to me. All right, so now that we've got the camera set up and ready to go, let's go over the autofocus settings and how it works. This is how the autofocus looks in all the different modes that you can change to. But let me show you the subject detecting modes real quick. There's human, face and eye, and animal plus human. Now you would think that face and eye detect is the mode you'd want to be in because of how different autofocus systems work like Sony, for example. But let me show you why this may not be the best option. Here's what face and eye looks like. As you can see, it detects the face with a box and has two lines intersect where it detects an eye. But when the subject will move their face, it will no longer detect a face and eye. It'll stop tracking that subject. This is why human detect is actually the mode you will want to be in most of the time. It will not only track the face and eye, but when it loses the eye, it will only track the face. Then if it loses the face, it will track the body. You can see it switch to the different tracking modes. Now let's go over all the different autofocus modes. We have tracking, full area, zone, one area plus, and one area. Let me turn off the human detect mode so you can get a better idea how the tracking mode works. This tracking box will appear and you can select on the touch screen what you want to track. Normally you probably wouldn't use this on a human because well, that's what the human detect mode is for, but I'll just click on Dallas to show you how it works. As you can see, the focus will track whatever you put the box on. This works well for like a product or something like that. The next one, full area, is going to use the full area or all of the tracking points on the sensor. This is the setting where having human detect on probably makes the most sense and you saw a bit of a preview earlier. Let me turn that setting off and let's go to zone. In zone mode, it'll only focus on the zone that you choose. As you can see, when Dallas leaves the zone, it focuses to the background. And when he comes back in, it'll focus back on him. The next mode is called One Area Plus. This is another mode where I think it makes a lot of sense to have human detection on because notice when this box appears, it's going to try and track a human within that box, but only when they are touching the area. As you can see, when he's just outside the box, it does not track him anymore but as soon as he touches the box, it begins tracking him again. This can be really useful when you wanna track a specific person in the scene, but not the other. As you can see, I can move anywhere around here and the camera will stay locked onto that person. 
It can even be useful if people are walking through the scene as well. It still is possible that it'll do some pulsing as people walk by, but I think it does a very good job sticking on the person you want. The last mode is just one area, which is similar to One Area Plus, obviously without the plus. You just click on wherever you want the camera to focus. You can also make the box bigger and smaller, and this also applies to One Area Plus. Now, another question I've had is how is the autofocus when you compare it to a Panasonic lens and a Sigma lens? Here is a comparison of Dallas doing various different moves, and I literally cannot find a difference between the two. They basically perform the exact same. Now I was using a DGDN lens from Sigma, the 16 to 28 millimeter specifically. And I think as long as you have a DGDN Sigma lens, which means it was designed for mirrorless cameras, you will see almost no difference at all. The last thing I wanna talk about is the autofocus settings because yes, you can adjust the AF speed and AF sensitivity. My recommendation for this is to start with the default, which is zero and zero, and adjust from there. You may even find that zero and zero is where you like to be. I personally like to be at AF speed three and the sensitivity at zero. But while I was in Japan, I did turn down the sensitivity to negative one, just because I felt like sometimes it would shift too often. But that was before like pre-firmware. I am on a new firmware now, so just adjust it as you wish. Before I tell you what Dallas has to say about the Lumix autofocus and how it compares to Sony, I have launched my own set of custom LUTs called Tonal Grades Volume 1. Click the link in the description to go learn more about them, and if you use code SOCIAL20, you'll save 20%. And I also launched my own Instagram filter. So if you use my Instagram filter and tag me, I will DM one of the Tonal Grain LUTs for free. So now here's what Dallas had to say. I, I, I gotta I, reiterate, I, uh, I told him right before we filmed, honest opinion, so. I wouldn't say it's fully up to where my Sony is at, but I would say there, this is definitely a step in the right direction. And I would say it's maybe one notch below the Sony, but all in all with the dark lighting we had, we were dealing with in here, it held focus very well. Less, less bouncing, I would say, than the mm -hmm. Sony. I feel like my Sony, especially when I got when I'm moving, you know, I've got objects in between me and the subject and whatnot, I'll have more bounce than I got with this, but overall I was, I was impressed with the autofocus. And there you have it. That's everything I have for this video. There is a link to everything in the description. And if you find this video helpful, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads. Until the next video though, happy filming.